Welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Mr. Gaurav Davda, Head Corporate Finance and Strategic Initiatives at Jindal Worldwide, joining in. Welcome to the show, Gaurav, and always a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you. Uh, Gaurav, firstly, let's start with the fourth quarter of FI22 and the year FI22 as a whole as well. How would you actually describe it and has it met your internal expectations after that kind of uh, down tick that all of us have seen for 18 to 24 months already? Uh, well, thanks for having me on, Iral, and a uh, pleasure to be on. Um, frankly, I think uh, FI22 blew past our best est estimates internally. Uh, we have, as a group, uh, as Jindal Worldwide Limited, we have recorded the best ever quarter for Q4 and the best ever financial year in the history of the group from a top line perspective and a profit, absolute profitability perspective. Of course, aspirationally, we want to get to a significantly higher margin number. But given the strength of the balance sheet today, given the operating leverage kicking in, uh, I think it's, you know, it's good times ahead and uh, the, the, the numbers are stacking up. Our return ratios have also moved significantly higher uh, than historical averages. And I think, uh, you know, yeah, all, all uh, indicators are pointing towards uh, bigger and better achievements going forward. Right. And what have been the key highlights of the quarter, according to you? Uh, exports, uh, stronger than uh, expected domestic business, both actually, uh, because what we've seen is even though, you know, cotton prices went through the roof over the last 12, 18 months, uh, we have been in a position to, uh, in fact, increase our margins, which is, uh, you know, not easily seen in the industry. Uh, we've actually managed to increase our margins on the back of our operating leverage, uh, and we've also seen uh, realizations uh, across the board, both domestic and international businesses yeah. going up. You know, our, our uh, strategy of focusing on the fast fashion business for both uh, international as well as domestic markets has actually seen a tremendous uptick in our average realizations per meter. And yeah. that premiumization has actually led to a significant improvement in uh, our margins as well as uh, converting down to the profitability and the returns. So, I mean, to put it simply, We've seen a tremendous amount of uh, traction from the global market space. Yes, there are headwinds. There have been headwinds. Uh, but I think uh, given our size and position in the industry and our uh, very clear uh, strategy of uh, you know, catering to the fast fashion space uh, has actually paid off. Right. And overall from here on as well, if you go to see in terms of exports as well as domestic market, how is that divide and how are you seeing growth pan out? So admittedly, I think, uh, you know, exports, which was contributing to nil almost three to four years back, uh, is today a significant contributor to our business. Uh, it contributes close to 25% of, uh, you know, our top line uh, on the denim side specifically. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, the domestic market has actually kicked in very, very strong. You know, mm -hmm. that's not something that we were estimating internally. But uh, what we have seen is the domestic market, the demand, the uh, now that people are you know practically out and about all over the place uh, changes of wardrobes changes of uh, fashion preferences uh, changes of sizes uh, you know a lot of those have actually kicked in and uh, we are seeing across the board people want to go out people want to spend more money mm. people want to uh, you know look good and denim i think is a staple for any of us in our wardrobes if i'm not mistaken uh, you me whoever so, you know, I think that is something that uh, has seen a tremendous growth and we see the domestic market only going stronger from it. Right. And overall, if you see in terms of where uh, capacity is concerned, what's the utilization that we've seen this year? So our average utilization, uh, while we don't formally report it, uh, you can take a range of about 70 odd percent, give and take. A few percentage points up and down, depending on how each month has panned out. But average, you can take about 70%. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and with that, do you think in terms of the growth ahead, we are looking at any expansion? So we are, uh, you know, I have discussed this with you earlier. Mm -hmm. You also made it public. Uh, we are expanding our back-end spinning facility. Uh, earlier, only about 30-35% of our spinning requirement was met in-house with everything else outsourced. Uh, but we realized that, you know, some of the premium uh, products that we need, uh, as well as to de-risk from price shocks, which we have seen in the market, uh, it's better to set up some of those facilities internally itself, 
while we will always have a healthy balance between the two mm-hmm. uh, i think the the uh, aim is to get to about 55 60% um you know back end spinning uh, facility for our internal use uh, with the balance 30 40% always you know uh, for space for uh, outsourcing so yes we are under we have undertaken a uh, almost 300 crore capex to strengthen our back end spinning facility and we are consolidating our capacities in the denim space and uh, we will eventually uh, you know over time the next couple of years uh, look to increase some of that as well but i think for now uh, with a pure focus on profitability and increase of margins i think we are we are uh, focusing a lot on our spinning business hmm. right and overall very interestingly if we see the margin growth for fy22 as well that has been pretty uh, i mean better in terms of realizations as well and and that's amidst the high inflationary environment that we've seen around so how is it that you've been able to expand realizations uh, and margins so as i said you know what we've done very clearly is uh, we were catering to the uh, you know larger volume uh, market mm-hmm. now over the last many years our as i said our average realizations per meter have only been trending upwards uh, and uh, you know we are nudging that uh, 180 200 rupee per meter mark uh, in fact we are somewhere in that band um, earlier it used to be 120 130 140 rupees a meter so i think uh, the premiumization strategy has really helped us uh, what we've also realized and uh, customers are also realizing is that we as a large denim player and whichever report you go by you know we uh, think that we we are uh, responsible for almost 8 to 10% of india's install capacity on the denim mm. side um we have all the product mix to service any customer that walks through the door there is uh, you know products ranging from the absolute bare uh, normal denims to the highest end type of uh, you know denims uh, with blended materials etc whether it is uh, stretch denims different colors textures sizes finishes uh and uh, anybody walking through the door is able to realize that we can cater to every need of theirs in fact as i mentioned we have almost 600 skus uh on our on our plate uh, which is something that we can offer any client so mm-hmm. what clients have realized is they have a surety of supply they have a surety of quality they have a surety of international standards and we are one of the being a large manufacturing entity in the country we are uh, moving towards being planet positive and we have a very strong focus on the esg space for on or, you know on the care of the environment for ourselves as well uh, various initiatives around that so i think uh, if you put all this in the mix uh, we've been able to pass on the pricing and we've been able to uh, in fact increase margins uh, as you've noticed over the last couple of years right and overall between denim shirting yarn dyed fabrics bed sheets Uh, i know denim is the strong point how are the other segments of business doing and how are you seeing growth pan out there so those uh, businesses form about 20% of the business, of the overall mm-hmm. revenue uh, give and take uh, those are still at about 60 65% capacity utilization historically also we've been at that 70% uh, marker so i think uh, those businesses are also doing very well uh, they have performed better than what we expected and they are uh, i think in this year we should uh, see you know them reaching back to uh, the 2019 20 uh, numbers but uh, denim of course has you know uh, far surpassed that uh, number uh, pre covid already right and overall very lastly if you have to see gorov in terms of the next few milestones over the next 2 to 3 years what would that look like for a jindal worldwide in fact before we go to the milestones as well another question i had was on the acquisition that one of the subsidiaries has made in the ev space uh, what would that actually be so uh, you know every business uh, reaches a certain scale uh, when there is uh, enough uh, you know resources available to make mm-hmm. opportunistic investments in other areas as well i think you see the largest corporate houses in the country and everyone has uh, you know had had I started with one or two businesses and then kind of scaled on to uh, large other uh, you know opportunities and we aim to be you know uh, to follow a similar strategy on an opportunistic basis uh, we are we did look at a variety of sectors we did shortlist about five out of them ev was one of them and we decided that we need to make a, a serious entry in that space 
So we acquired uh, a company called Earth Energy EV, as is reported in the press, uh, and as has been disclosed by us also. Uh, the idea was that uh, you know we need to have a basket of offerings uh, for the India and the world of tomorrow. I think what is what has happened is uh, being planet positive, being uh, keeping an eye to the future, and as a group we never have we've never we've never had a B two C play. Uh, you know we were we've been predominantly a manufacturing and a B two B player, but we've never really had a B two C play. And I think hmm. with this acquisition, we've got the capability, we've got the manpower, we've got the team, we've got the manufacturing facilities and the product. Uh, and uh, in fact, even the distributorship has been signed up with, uh, I think, seven or eight distributors across the country. And the idea was that, you know, let's get on to a product which can give us scale, which is a customer facing product. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, uh, ramp up there and uh, generate shareholder returns. Right. So, so tell me one thing. I mean, is this inorganic growth strategy something that we are going to continue, or this is just a one-off? Oh no, we are, uh, you know, actively looking at uh, inorganic opportunities within a couple of identified areas, uh, and as and how things materialize and unfold there, we will be, you know, uh, sharing it with you. Uh, but I can, you can be rest assured that uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, I am, or rather me and the team are continuously on the lookout for opportunities across the value chain, whether it is on the distress side, on the growth side, early stage, what have you, within a few, you know, identified uh, spaces and sectors. And that's a key uh, strategy for any large corporate going forward, and we are no different. I think uh, if we find the right opportunity at the right price, and uh, given the area that we want to focus on, or the areas that we want to focus on, I think we are very open to exploring this and this will form an integral part of our strategy going forward also. Right. And very lastly, in terms of the next milestones that we could see over the next two to three years, what would that look like? Well, uh, I think uh, the idea has always been to increase margins. Of course, we faced uh, headwinds, uh, you know, many a time over in the last many years. But I think now we have a pretty clean runway. We've got our capacities in place, we've grabbed a large market share from some of the global fabric suppliers also. And we hope to continue that. Aspirationally, we want to move the mid teens EBITDA margin number. Uh, today, we are nudging that 10% number, uh, which two years back was at 6%. So clearly, we are making strides there on a top line, which is expanding. So it's not a it's not a linear uh, growth only. It's we are we are aiming for non-linear growth, uh, where we think that uh, you know we'll be able to achieve that mid-teens growth not immediately, but I think over the next, as you mentioned, two three years, we should hit that uh, mid-teens number, and we are pretty confident that we should be able to achieve that uh, historical revenue growth rate uh, of 15 17 percent that we have been exhibiting over the last many years to continue going forward. The first milestone would be to reach a half billion dollar top line, which I think in the next uh, few years we we hope to reach that, and uh, you know uh, create as as I mentioned our internal mantra has been to enhance profitability and shareholder returns, and that is very clearly evident in our return on capital employed as, as well as return on equity, which are at I think five year highs today, uh, and uh, hovering around the 20 22 percent mark, and I think we want to make sure that it stays here and only. Absolutely, and the trajectory looks very strong as well from here on, Gaurav, with the kind of opportunities we're seeing. Thank you so much for speaking to us at Nirmal Bangya. Congratulations once again, and good luck for the coming quarters and years to come. Speak to you soon again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.